Welcome back to Blender Frenzy. I am Justin, and in a previous video, I showed you how you can maintain the shape of this by uh, using a modifier. When you are using a subdivision surface modifier, um, you can use an edge split to contain or to maintain that toilet paper roll shape. And I'll show you what I mean. If I disable the edge split modifier, you see this shape because the subdivision surface modifier takes over. And I've tried to play around with these options here to see if I can get um, something that uh, resembles our toilet paper roll again, but I can't. The closest is this simple. So if I check simple, um, it does give us that shape again, sort of, but you can see this uh, weird lighting going on here where it's uh, either stretching that texture or having those banding and then if we come over to uh, cycles you can see the same thing happening it's just recognizing more of that cylinder shape um, and so because of that uh, and that's not what we want uh, going back to the modifier properties here uh, we just added an edge split above our subdivision surface and then used Catmull Clark and that gives us this nice shape that we have here. And the reason I thought this was a good idea is because it uses our sharp edges that we marked ourselves. So you can see if I uncheck that, we have that subdivision surface shape again, and then the sharp edges uh, we defined, and I'll show you those here. Oh, let's go into edit mode and come down to sharp. And you can see these are the edges the blue edges here we defined as sharp edges. And I really like this because it allows us a lot of control over which edges we want on our model to be sharp and which ones we don't. However, the edge split modifier is not the best way to do it. And primarily because if you apply it and you can't apply modifiers in edit mode, so we have to go back into object mode. And let's just go ahead and apply this edge split. Um, go back into edit mode and if I choose these top faces and move those okay well you have to disable proportional editing here and now if I try to move those you can see oh that actually is um, separated because the edge split modifier did exactly what the edge split modifier is supposed to do it's supposed to split those edges and so it separates all of these edges from each other and that's going to really mess up your model. So we don't want that. So I'm just going to undo all of that, get our edge split back here. And what I'm going to do is just get rid of that edge split. Okay, so instead, there's a better way. So let's bring up our properties within. And let's go back into edit mode. And you can see our cage here, or our original polygons. Uh, and by the way, if you choose this button here, that will shrink wrap that cage onto the subdivision surface mesh and you have this option with a lot of different modifiers so just so you're aware of that but we don't want that we want to keep the original shape and so let's go ahead and select our edges oh let's go into edge mode and i'm just going to select by hit, pressing alt and then shift alt to select all of the ones that we originally had as sharp and now you have these options here under the item tab. And so if I just take this mean crease and I bring that all the way up to one, you can see nothing happened except for now the edges are pink instead of blue. But not to worry, all we have to do is come over here and check use creases. And now we have that original shape again. And because it is a slider, we can actually choose uh, how sharp you want those edges or how much of the subdivision surface shape you want to keep. So that uh, gives you quite a lot of control right here. But I'm going to keep that all the way at 1. Now, if I disable our overlays, you can still see there's still a little bit of problems with some of the shading. It, does, it still doesn't look quite right. So to fix that, just come down to your mesh properties and to normals, and we're going to check auto smooth again. And now you can see the lighting changes to smooth on the faces that we had originally chosen as smooth which is the outer and the inner ring here and then the flat shading is our top and our bottom and the way we did that before of course was coming to here and shade smooth and shade flat after we chose the faces that we wanted of course so now you can play with this angle here if i bring this all the way down to 
zero, you can see we still have the banding lines from the subdivision surface and the polygons from the cylinder. Um, so my recommendation is since we've already chosen all of the sharp edges, just crank this angle all the way up, all the way to 180. And that means that everything is going to be smooth except for the specific edges we chose to be sharp, which we are using our mean crease here to determine. And you can still play with this if you want, if you, if you want that to be uh, not like 100% sharp, maybe some objects look more realistic when it's not like that. This is now, this is not a bevel, by the way. Um, that's a little bit different thing. This is just uh, the difference between the original polygons and the subdivision surface. So that's kind of, you know, if you're going for a specific shape there, you can play around with that. Again, I'm going to keep mine at one. And that is all you have to do. Um, so now, going back to our modifiers, we have the subdivision surface modifier at the top, which some workflows require you to have that at the top, such as baking. And we are not splitting our edges of our polygons um, apart from each other. And we still maintain our very beautifully shaped toilet paper roll. So that's that. Hopefully more to come very soon with the second level of our quarantine series. Uh, so stay tuned and you'll see me in the next one.